Good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xan Talk Show. So today we are going to do Emacs Lisp coding and、uh, Emacs Lisp coding, and especially focusing on parsing URL. You know,、uh, so what's what's a URL? That's you know that's a URL. So parsing URL, and I'm gonna demo several Emacs Lisp commands and also some JavaScript. So the topic is parsing URL in Emacs Lisp. Okay, thank you guys for coming.、Uh, let's begin. So okay, so so let's see、uh, today's talk show. So I'm gonna、uh, first of all demo some of the Xali、um, website features. Okay, so you go to Xali dot info. That's my website, and turn on JavaScript. Okay, and、uh, video check, audio check. Okay, good. So, Xali dot info and click topic search, and and now there's a new feature. Whatever you type, you can the URL will update with parameters, so you can bookmark it or you can share it on Twitter and whatever. Then it'll show the result. So let's、uh, let's try、uh, Emacs. Okay. Nine hundred results Lisp, okay. Three hundred results. Let's say Emacs Lisp list, okay. Twelve results. So here are all the tutorials about Emacs Lisp, and now you can copy the the URL, copy it, and go back here, and let's open a new buffer, paste it. You can see the there's a parameters. Now if you copy that. And let's see. Let's switch to a different browser. Open it. Paste the URL. Enter.、Uh, and you need you need to turn on JavaScript, of course. Then you see the result shows. So that means you can share,、um, you know, the the results of search. Okay, so that is the Xali web search. Okay, let me show you.、Um, so okay, so let's copy that. Let's put it in in talk show so we have a record of what we talked about today. So paste that there. Okay, and that's Xali、uh, website, Xali dot info website search. Now let's go to Unicode. Let me dem demonstrate Unicode search. Similar. Okay. So here is the Unicode search. Turn on JavaScript; it's already on.、Uh, let's search for fire. Okay, so you got all Unicode characters whose name contains the word fire. Okay, this light is in my eyes.、Uh, okay, so now let's do it again. Let's see water. Okay, okay, that's all Unicode characters whose name contains water. Let's try gram. Okay, now there's a lot of Unicode with the、uh, word gram in it. So this is prostagramman, whatever that is. This character, Greek capital letter alpha with sphili and prostagramman. Okay, that's new for me. Okay, that's a that's a apostrophe under the character. That's interesting. You know, so Unicode. So you know, there are hundreds of thousands characters. So these are interesting. So many of them, black parallelogram,、uh, trigram for heaven. This one,、uh, then then so lots of trigrams. Then you have left-handed interlaced pentagram, right-handed interlaced pentagram. You have pentagram. You know many interesting characters. Then you have hexagram. Hexagram is just like trigram, but it's. By the way, the, these trigrams you can see in Korean flag. You know that's the Taiji Chinese philosophy. But you also have hexagram made out of six bars. You know this is combination, combinatorial. Actually, this is very interesting because, you know what? Let let me show you. This is very interesting. This about trigrams. Okay, so let's go to the page. Uh, trigram. Okay, so let's go to the cultural. Let's search for culture. Yeah. So let's open that page. So you can see here is the collection of monogram, which is just one single bar, but 
a common, you know, a single bar can break into two bars or break into three bars. So you have monogram. Then you have digram, these characters in Unicode. Then you have a uh, trigram. Now these are the most popular. You can see it in Chinese Tai Chi, you know, Bagua, if you know what that is. Uh, and, you know, and this Bagua Palm, which is a Kung Fu style. Uh, and you can see these characters in Korean flag. Let's show. Each of the trigram actually has a meaning. So you see, you see those uh, trigrams in Korean flag. So there are a total of eight possibilities. When you have three bars and each bar has two variations, either of a continuous bar or cut in the middle. So you have six, you have eight possibilities. The Korean flag shows only four of them. And each one actually has a meaning. So for example, this one is trigram for earth all broken and and this one all connected bars is trigram for heaven heaven and earth that's that's chinese philosophy uh, buddhism concept heaven and earth heaven is kind of equivalent to god to the western uh, society uh, earth basically means anything that's non god you know human affairs earth heaven earth then you have lake trigram for lake fire and so on but interestingly, this is uh, rarely seen, is you have the hexagram made out of uh, six characters. And uh, then you have tetragram made out of four, uh, four bars. Okay, so hexagram and tetragram, uh, you don't see them often. But let me, yeah, let me show you how they connect to mathematics. This is, you can consider them as binary numbering system okay that's a that's an interesting part for you programmers binary numbers numbering system in fact um lebanese you know one of the greatest mathematician lebanese the the inventor of calculus uh and also newton lebanese has commented let, let me let me find it okay so now let's go to uh back to unicode search let's go to so a bit digression and today is random Say hi, okay, uh, whoever you are. So let's topic search and uh, let's see. Trigram, there it is. Okay, so uh, actually, where is the article? Uh, okay, so the article is in ksadi.org. So I have two websites, ksadi.info and another one is ksadi.org. Um, but okay, let's search for it. Sadi dot dot org trigram. Ah, JavaScript. Nah. Okay, uh, Grandmaster. Let's try that one. Xa arts, Xa music, uh, and stuff. Let's see. So this is a kung fu movie. Uh, you know. Kung Fu movie, they are not realistic. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, Tai Chi and Yin Yang stuff. And uh, there it is. So this is a verse from, you know, the here's a verse describing the Bagua. Bagua means eight, eight extremities. You know, the, these eight trigrams represents the kind of the eight extremities. And here's the English trans translation. So let, let me read it, okay? The limitless produces the delimited, and this is the absolute. The Taiji produces two forms named yin and yang. The two forms produces four phenomena named lesser yin, greater yin, lesser yang, and greater yang. Okay, I think these four characters are, the, are what's in the Korean flag, I'm, I'm guessing. You, you can you can check, you know, you can verify. Then the four phenomena act on the eight trigrams. Eight, eight are 64 hexagrams. Okay, so they mentioned trigrams and hexagrams. They, they, you know, so they derive from, you know, the absolute, which is like, I, th I, th I suppose one bar or something. But anyway, from one bar to trigram to, uh, to uh, hexagram. 
Okay, so know that a trigram is inherently, inherently a binary system. You have three lines, each line has two states. So 2 raised to the power of 3 is 8 possible combination, combinatorics. Okay, that's a, a combinatorics is a field in mathematics. Okay, so for you programmers, I recommend you study this subject. Very interesting. For example, lottery, you know, if you want to know what's the possibility of winning lottery, you know, the formula, how do you derive that form formula and things like that, that's combinatorics, okay. Combinatorics has quite a lot of interesting applications. For example, tree, the possible binary tree, you know, how many number, you know, ba basically combinatorics is about counting counting the number of uh, possibilities, enumeration, okay, combinatorics is, you can call, uh, you know, in other words, is enumeration, the problem of enumeration. So for example, if you have, you know, lottery, 50 numbers, you pick six, what are the possibilities of six unique numbers? That's combinatorics, that's the most basic fundamental combinatorics, you know, pick six numbers out of uh, 50 or whatever pick n numbers out of m numbers. So the total number of binary tree given n number of nodes, that's also combinatorics, you know, and there's a partition, partition theory, there's a, okay, this poly, uh, poly cube, uh, what's the exact, exact name? Polyominoes, you know, like how many shapes is it possible to be formed by, let's say, four cubes? You know, that's combinatorics. And you can have the same problem with triangles. How many total possible number of shapes can be formed by, let's say, five triangles? You know, you, you put them side by side, or squares. So combinatorics. And, uh, you know, there's many different um, approach to find a solution. Analytic combinatorics, that's using calculus to trying to find a solution. You know, partition, partition theory, graph theory, you you, you guys probably uh, heard of. Uh, design theory, I don't know what that is. Uh, finite geometry, you know, so these are combinatorics. So, for example, this one is another very int interesting thing. For example, this, you can think of it um, as a uh, maze, you know, creation of maze. You can write a program to do it. And the problem here in particular is how many possible uh, let's see, self-avoiding work, you know, how many possible, you know, self-avoiding work in a square, on a grid, you know, so algebraic combinatorics, uh, and, and there's a geometric combinatorics, uh, okay, so combinatorics and, and, uh, what is this, combinatorial optimization, you know, here is a sphere packing, I suppose. That's the most uh, famous um, problem in math. Very difficult problem. Okay, so we went into combinatorics, and let's quote. Um, okay, Gottfried Leibniz, you know, born uh, 1646 to 1716, inventor of calculus and father of computer said that hexagrams a base for claiming the universality of the binary number system. You know, so I happen to found that quote, you know, I'm not sure exactly what's the context. context. So he says hexagrams a base for claiming the universality of the binary number system. Very interesting, okay? Digression, digression into combinatorics. So now let's go back to our URL problem. That's what we wanted to uh, talk about today. So I was showing, I was demonstrating the Unicode search, okay? So we happened to search on uh, gram, okay? So Unicode search, uh, let, let's see something else, heart, okay? Heart, so you got all possible hearts in Unicode. Uh, Okay, so now the point is now the URL, you can see the URL, um, you can see, let's, let's post it here, okay? So the URL contains a query stream, so you can, uh, you know, bookmark it and you'll, you'll uh, have the same result, okay? That's my, that's a new feature on my website. 
So okay, so we demonstrated that we demonstrate the my website search and Unicode search. Let's uh, let, let me demonstrate uh, these Emacs these commands Emacs commands. Okay. So for example, I copy this URL. You know, often I want to uh, tweet, Twitter. You know, tweet uh, or post on Xar Discord. You know, on, on social media. So I want to uh, post a link to my website. So usually you need a title. So here I got a file path. But you know, how do you get the title? Usually you open the file. Uh, wait, you open the file, which is this file. Let's try another file, okay? Let's go to Ksa, you know, Ksa programming blog. So copy the URL back to Emacs, close it, paste the URL. You so you see that's a URL. You you need a title. So usually what you do is you open the file, then you go to the top, then you go to where the title is. You copy it, close it, then you paste it here. And also you this is a local file path. You see that. Um, Local file path. You need it to change it to the, you know, fully qualified domain name file path. So I have a command in Emacs. So, so look, look. I copy that, paste it here. So I'm gonna do it here. So I think this key. You see. So let let's do it again. Delete that line. So I got a local file path. Press three keys. And there it is, Xa programming blog with the URL. So this is very convenient for for me. So let me show you what that command, uh, the source code. Okay. Okay. So the command is Xa site. This is my personal command, and uh, it's the. Let's look at the source code. So the source code is here. Uh, let's narrow to region. So there are a total of thirty five lines. So that's a demonstration of this command. Let me demonstrate another, and let me tell you what's the point. Uh, yeah, Xa site. Okay, so hold on a second. So let's see. So that's demonstration of Xa site as a citation. And uh, let me demonstrate open URL, open file from clipboard. Okay. So now let's go back to this Xa programming blog. Let's copy the file path. Copy it. And uh, paste it. You can see, you know, it's that file. So I want to open that file. So what do you do usually? So usually, you know, what I usually do is you open a buffer, you paste it, then you call usually FFAP. FFAP stand for Find File at Point. That's a building Emacs command. So we can try it. FFAP. Okay. Then it'll ask you, "Are you sure this is the file you want to open?" Yeah, shut up. You know, then it opens. Then you can show in browser. Okay, so go back here, close it. But anyway, that's too many steps. Okay, what I want is that you see, you see, what I want is usually let's go to some other, um, some other file. So for example, this is my. Yeah, that's not a good example. Okay. So, if, for example, this is uh, one of my page. I copy the URL. I want to open this local file in Emacs. So I copy the URL, go to Emacs, and I just press three keys. It will open this page. For example, now I show in browser. It's exactly the same page. So what is that command? Okay, that command is first of all, let's paste the uh, path. That command is this one. Xa open file. From clipboard, okay. So basically, when you copy your file path into the clipboard, you then you call this command. It will open whatever the path. So I don't have to, you know, create a new buffer, paste the path, then call a command to open that path. You know, so very convenient. So once I, you know, as I work on my website, I copy some URL, then I can just start site, and it becomes these. You know, I can then I can treat treat it. And so on, very convenient. So there, are, these are two commands. Okay, let's hold on a second. Let's um, okay show today's talk show. So that command is xa open file from clipboard. Now let's see if I if I have the source code uh, somewhere. No, I don't. I, I, you know, it's I don't have a page showing the source code. So anyway, but now there's a problem. 
with these two commands. Why? Because now my website now has the um, uh, has the has the parameters. Okay, let me show you. So, for example, let let me let me demonstrate. Okay, so let me demonstrate here. Uh, wait here. So paste it and paste it again. So you see, now normally, you know, before today, my website is usually static. You know, I don't have the these parameters. So if I want to um, cite, you know, this path, I just do, and it becomes this. You know, the title Unicode search. Now, but if I do it here, it doesn't work. It, you know, it says error. XAR site error file doesn't exist. You see, it's trying to consider this parameter as part of the file path. So I need to fix that. So let's fix that. Hey guys, so uh, any questions for me? So, uh, you know, so, okay, so, so, and let's now code emac lisp. Um, okay, so now we can start to code emac lisp. Let's see, okay, let's see where do we go now. We demonstrated that, we demonstrate that, we demonstrate these two emac lisp commands. Uh, oh, okay, so let me show you the JavaScript. So the JavaScript, you know, how do you implement these, uh, you know, parameters? You know, the trick about these parameters, this URL get uh, URL param parameters. So here is the dissection of the URL. Okay, so let's magnify. Dissection, naming of the URL parts. So here is the protocol. Here is the host. Okay, that's a host name. Then part of the host name is domain name, domain name. Then you have subdomain name. Then this number is a port number. Uh, and then you have this part is the resource path. Technically, it's called resource path. Then you have a question mark. What comes after the question mark is called query string. Okay, that's a proper word, not parameter. It's called query string. Now, given a query string, it's separated by a ampersand uh, character. Then each part is a pair, uh, uh, um, a query string name and a value, okay? Key value pairs, yeah, you can say that. Okay, so anyway, this is query, query string, then after that is a fragment, URL fragment. So, so one the thing we want to do today is write a emac list to pass this uh, URL. So anyway, the, here's a JavaScript, and uh, okay. So let me let me let me talk about. Um, so when you do when you want to have a interactive search website, you know you see if you look at the URL, you know look at the URL carefully. As I type, let's say. Um, th you can see the url gets updated i n g so so this is a unicode character contains the word thing uh, i don't know what that is let's say m o n mono okay all these are unicode characters containing the word mono Okay, and you we have a interesting character kimono, a Japanese traditional uh, attire, and face with face with monocle. That's also interesting. And we have mono rail. Okay, so the point is the URL gets updated. So when you whenever you have a page like that in JavaScript, the question the problem is when you have a search box, how do you do this? Okay. Uh, that is easy. That is not difficult. So I have a new blog on how to, how to do that. So you go to, you know, start programming blog and you can see a new page, update URL parameters. Okay, so here is um, how you do it. Okay, 
I don't. I am not going to go over JavaScript. Let's go back to um, Emacs. Okay, parsing URL. So, so next thing we want to do is to parse URL to fix my commands. Okay. Okay. So let me show you how to do that. Parse URL. So first of all, let's try. A, uh, let's copy the URL. Let's let's demo. Let's start to do Emacs. Okay. Let's start the Emacs list, paste it, and and uh, start code here. So here is Emacs list, Xar Emacs list mod. Okay, so here is a stream, and we want to pass it into separ separate parts. So let's write a function. Okay, define pass uh, x pass. Okay, let's just say that version okay so let's say the input so input is a URL let's just name X URL I put X in front so that we know it's a, a local variable just um, uh, so so let's here's an example URL let's quote it let's comment it out and uh, we want to pass the URL, right? So given the URL, so so there are several parts. Okay, so there is the the parts are protocol host port number path. Uh, let's say resource resource path then frag fragment okay so let's add a x in front so that just for my convention so they stand out the variable names becomes bold or we can put a dollar sign that's just my convention I started to use x so so anyway so we want to pass the URL into those parts. So how do you do? Well, um, you can do it with a regular expression. Okay, let's do it. This is not the most efficient, but and also it's not the most robust. Robust. Uh, but let's you know for the sake of this Emacs this tutorial, let's just code it. Okay, comments keep them coming. Okay, so let's. We want to pass the URL now. So how do you, uh, yeah, regular expression. So, okay, so how do you, um, yeah, the regular expression. So, uh, so what's the function to match a regular expression in here in this case? Um, string match okay so you know I just know it because I've been coding Emacs this for over 10 years string match is the command you want given a regular expression you want to match a string and in this case the string is the X URL okay so let's go back here and optional start we don't care okay so what what is the regular expression okay let's do the regular expression the regular expression will be HTT. So first of all, we need a. So let's see the host name. Does does it include the colon? It I don't think so. So right. So this part will be I'm I'm just gonna work on this. Okay, so we want to capture that's why we need a parenthesis okay uh, God. Uh, and the parenthesis in emacs string needs a backslash i mean a parenthesis in emacs regular expression is literal okay so in other in python in Perl, in php in javascript in java in golan or the you know the regular expression Parenthesis means capture. However, in Emacs 
this regular expression parenthesis is literal. So if you want to capture, you have to backslash. You have to you need one backslash in front. However, in Emacs this stream, there is no special regular expression stream. It's just normal string. So in a normal string, a backslash is a escape character. So if you actually want a backslash, you need to put a backslash in front. So two back backslash. So this is actually how you do capture. You know, a toothpick syndrome. Very severe in Emacs Lisp. Okay. So anyway, the first part is gonna capture. So we want to start with that. That means start of the actually. You know, so that correct sign means the beginning of the string. Okay. Uh, but in but actually in Emacs, you what you need is not that. What you actually the correct way is again backslash backslash that okay because that tick that back tick you know at grave accent i think that what's the official unicode name so official unicode name for this character is grave accent okay so this grave accent in emacs this means the beginning in emacs regular expression it means the beginning of the of the matched text, the beginning of matched text. Okay, the correct character means means two things: either the beginning of the match text or the beginning of a line. So it has two meanings. You know, this is some special. You know, this is a special case in Emacs regular expression, because in other languages you just have this, but in Emacs this. If you really want to do it properly, you should use this, the, the grave accent character. Okay, <laughs> so I, 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 I suppose this is uh, too esoteric. Hello, Raisin. So anyway, so, uh, but <clears throat> let's just use that. It's more familiar to most people. And similarly, for the end, you need a dollar sign. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let's uh, so let's continue with the regular expression. So you want to match the protocol. So the protocol will be a to z and or a to z and zero to nine. Okay, let's say zero to nine. Okay. Okay, that's a protocol name. So the first capture is that. Then, then you got a domain name. Okay, so now we can just copy that. Then we got the domain name. Okay, then you got the port number okay domain domain name includes a dot so you need to put a dot here actually we need one or more characters one or more of any of these characters okay so that's why you need a plus plus means one or more so now here is a domain name I mean the host name we capture that part then the port number okay so let's copy that again port number port number and here is just 0 to 9 okay okay let's try this okay so port number then after the port number you have a slash then you have after port number you have the path resource path does that include the first slash no it does not include the first slash so this is a technical detail you know you actually you have to pay attention if you are, if you are actually working on some code so the first slash doesn't count so let's um, actually let's turn the monospace font let's go back to monospace font so so now you need to capture the path so that would be that okay so anything path will be Okay, so path the path part will be uh, more complex because you also need the percentage sign that capture because it gets into encoding because if you have a Unicode character in the path, it's not allowed. You have to encode it in encode it. For example, space becomes percentage sign twenty. 
a space, a literal space is not allowed. So that's why you need the percentage sign. Okay, that's called URL encoding. Okay, let me let me show you. Since we are, uh, I'm gonna just show you my stuff. So Xadi code, you know, Xadi dot info search. You type percent, then you can see. So Emac this URL percent encode decode that shows you how, and uh, and you can also code. Uh, Emac this command to do that, but calling JavaScript. Okay, let's open that. Uh, and here is an article about. Let's open them. I, you know, so and there's a complexities when it involves a ampersand character because ampersand character in HTML also needs to be encoded. So this is <laughs> complexity extreme. V very very. Uh. Okay, this 40% is about 40% keyboard. Okay, so let's open them. So so here, this is a tutorial on Emacs URL percent encoding. So you can see uh, example, if you have a Unicode like that, it needs to become, you know, percentage C3 and so on. It needs to be, you know, anyway, you can read the article. So, and this article is about Okay, writing a Emacs command to do percent percent encoding and decoding, but coding a JavaScript to do it because in JavaScript there's a building uh, a building function to do it. This one decode URI component, or we can do it in pure Emacs. Lisp. So here is how you do. Actually, there is a building command in the URL util library. Okay, so let me move on quickly. So so here is another. Uh, this is an article explaining the percent encoding decode. So anyway, let's go back to the to the parsing URL. So that's why we need the percentage sign, and we need other things. But but let's not let's not let's just you know um, do this quickly. So now you need the parameter part. So what is the oh God? This is never gonna end. So we already talked for 46 minutes. Uh, okay, the parameter part will be. So you need, uh, let's see, okay, so. So you need also the ampersand. Let's just say that, okay, let's forget about it. And also you need the equality, okay? So that gives you the parameters what's the proper name query string okay then the last part is fragmentation okay the fragmentation is let's say anything let's just say anything one or more till the end actually the fragmentation is actually may not exist so we need to have regular expression that checks the possibility there's no fragmentation and also you need a regular expression to to check the possibility there is no parameters so this gets complex and also the absolute path may be may be empty and also port number so this is this is not a robust robust solution robust you know, the regular expression will get more complex. In fact, I think to do this properly, you don't use the regular expression. But anyway, let's just, um, let's just push on. Okay, so this is too long. Let's make it into two lines. So, okay, so delete that, delete that, shrink. Let's look at our whole command. Now let's cut prettyfy. Okay, so let's just, let's just do that for now. Okay, so now we got first part, Two part three, four, five, six. Okay, so you need to set them. Okay. Uh, God, this is this is gonna take a long time. Set protocol to be match string. Match string is match string is a function that 
gets the matched uh, groups. Okay, so the in this case is the first match. Okay, so match string one. That's right, and the string is this. You need to add it here. Uh, so okay, let's just do it this way. X host export x resource path x frag okay and now now let's see one two three four four five okay that should do it uh, let's hope um, okay and now let's print them Let's just return return a list return a list of these things. That's right. Okay. Pretty find the code. Okay, I maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. That's our code. That's our whole code. Okay. X pass URL. Let's name it something better okay x pass url and uh, documentation return a list of parts okay now let's call the command let's copy that let's call it and let's and uh, that would be wait the argument would be this example Okay, evaluate the code. Okay, you can see I called uh, evaluate. So Emacs now know this function. Now we are going to evaluate this line. Okay, and see what's the result. Do it. Okay, debugger entered this error. Invalid regular expression. Oh God, expected. I knew, you know, you almost never gonna succeed on regular expression. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we forgot the uh, backslash, 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 okay? Now, evaluate this code again, call it again. There it is, but we got nil, nil, nil. That means the code, the regular expression failed. Let's double check, okay? So, ah, God, why is the... You can see here's the result. It's all nil. That means we captured none of it uh, is correct. You know, I'm writing this because just to demonstrate Emac Lisp. But the proper way to do it, there's a library already built in in Emac Lisp because Emacs has a browser built in. You know, so you know if if you if you don't know, Emacs already has a browser. Uh, Building. So let uh, hold on a second. Let me copy. Copy the URL. Let's let's open. Uh, let's log what we talked about into uh, uh, today's talk show. Okay. So we copied. Uh, we we did that. We did that, and uh, we searched for percentage sign. Okay. Okay. So now we want to. What what is it that we want to do? Uh, Emacs is regular expression. We want to. Ah, uh, this is taking a long time. So we want to. Yeah, there should be a building function to do this. Yeah, I was going to show you Emacs browser. Okay, so let's search for Xali code search. Emacs browser. So you can see. Emacs Lisp view, view view URL in web browser browse URL okay so there is a built-in browser what is this uh, okay close that so there is a built-in Emacs browser let's show it let's demo okay today's random issue let's demo okay so www browse okay and uh, wrong argument type what i haven't <laughs> now the first time when you use the emacs browser you got an error 
uh, run table argument emacs 28 what's going on yeah I, you know uh, I haven't used emacs browser building browser but now I got an error but it would work if I start emacs 27 uh, but I don't I don't know okay let, let, let's try to make it work okay so let's open emacs 28 let's open beam yeah I do have emacs 27 okay start uh, Windows terminal okay that's a new application Windows terminal better than the command dot exe the, better than Windows console so I recommend you download Windows terminal okay so now cd bin duh. so we want to start emacs 27 I'm using emacs 28 so emacs you know possibly my distro yeah my emacs 28 broke broke the building emacs web browser so let's try emacs 27 okay do it okay here is a emacs 27 now let's call let's magnify call www uh what 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 is the browser command eww okay u browser eww meta x eww brown okay just eww and uh, enter url let's say xali.info so there it is a browser within emacs including graphics so here is uh, including including graphics but it does not support svg um, I don't think so so anyway here's my website in Emacs browser but if you go to my website let's see xali.info you can see uh, apparently it doesn't support YouTube you know embedded YouTube videos but there is a SVG JavaScript clock so and that is also not showing up here so let's search for SVG there there it is it doesn't show you know it doesn't show the JavaScript anyway so Emacs browser okay so let's close this we don't need it anymore uh, okay Emacs 27 we demonstrated the U browser uh, we what we want to do yeah so Emacs has a browser built in that means you know written in Emacs Lisp entirely because you know I can let's let's show the source code oh, I think uh, enter URL actually oh actually Emacs 28 works you know I was calling the wrong command before so so Emacs has a browser building written entirely in Emacs Lisp so let's see the show, uh, source code describe function EWW okay there it is okay so and jump to the source code so here is the source code and you jump to dire jump you jump to dire jump to the to the directory so you can see the source code for the U browser okay so 2,000 lines is more than that they split into you know it's, it's more than 10,000 lines so but basically my point is that it has a browser building so it has lots of you know URL parsing uh, parsing HTML already in in Emacs Lisp so there's a code for to pass URL okay that is my point now okay so now let's close the browser now let's um, get back to our code let's see where where is it um, what's wrong then that's it for today you know I was going to 
find the library for parsing URL. I can, yeah, I can probably find it. Let's let's find it now. Okay, so describe function. Let's let's show the pink window. And close this. Okay, describe function eww. Okay, go to the source code, then start find call command to search all dot el files for pass url that's probably the name okay so search that this directory search for el files there it is url there it is url generic pass url so there is the that's probably the correct function so let's just open it any one of them so there is that that is a function so now describe function url generic pass url there it is the source code so it's in the file url pass okay fantastic fantastic so it has written you know so it has written for us so let's try to call, call this command okay so let's see how many lines is that so this command by itself is 100 lines okay so you can see it's not using just one regular expression because that would be very complex. Um, so anyway, so let's try to use So it says return an URL struct of the parts of the URL, URL struct. So it's using a struct data structure. The CL style struct contains the following fields. Okay, I, okay let's copy it, close it, close it, close it. Let's try to uh, call this command and see if that works okay run it fantastic now show show the output show the message buffer so you can see it passed correctly so you got we got the protocol and neo neo that's some other field you got the host name you got port number port number you got okay so they they join the path and the parameter into one then fragment okay Okay, that works. So I think that's it for today. Or we can try to get our um, regular expression to work. We, we we should be able to. Okay, let me try. So the host name, host name. Uh, let's see. So we got the we got a protocol. Then we got the host name, including a dot examples okay then we got the port number zero to nine one or more then slash then this is a path resource path okay that should work one or more plus and then here is the parameters okay the query string okay so why is our um why is our regular expression returning nil all the time? So match string one. Yeah, so so let's let's do some debug, okay? It's just message protocol okay eval the buffer eval this neo so why is it neo so if we okay let's uh, let's try that eval the code eval that's still neo so is it because let's remove that okay eval eval neo protocol what's wrong a to z a to o the yeah so this is this part is wrong the z needs to be capital uh, there it is okay eval the code eval this part that's still neo so a to z a to z zero to nine one or more uh, I don't know why is that string match
Okay, so that is incorrect for some reason. Let's comment it out. Let's make it simpler. Okay, so here let's just do that. Okay. Eval the function and eval this part. There it is, HTTP. So you can see in there it is. We got it correct. So that means our regular expression, this long one, is incorrect. So, but we, before we go do anything, let's add back the beginning of string. Okay. Eval, eval. That's still correct. Okay. So now let's add. So that part is uh, correct. So that part is correct. Then the second part, the second part, colon, colon is literal. Then slash, slash, slash is literal in Emacs regular expression. Then we want this part. So why is it not working? So let's copy that okay let's do it port number okay let's just try this simpler expression okay comment this out okay eval the code eval it then run this it still works HTTP Okay, so now we made some progress. Now, now we got the protocol and we got the host. Okay, let's let's also uh, put the host there. Uh, okay, so hold on a second. Okay, so eval the code, run it, there it is, correct. Now we let's add another part. So we got the host name correct, then oh I know what's going on. Because the this part you need a slash, but we don't have a slash there. So we need a, that's a resource path part. So we add a slash, run the code, and actually make that run the code. Now eval. Now it's O'Neill again. So actually, so the last part is fragment. Okay, the fragment. Let's see. It's a fragment. Uh, eval it. Eval. Neo, Neo, or Neo. So there's something. Oh, the question mark. There it is. The question mark in regular expression means. Um, means any character. Uh, wait. It means zero or one occurrence. So you need to escape it backslash to escape it backslash to escape the backslash okay now run the code and run this code fantastic now we got HTTP the host name then okay neo 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 then we got the port number okay the port number we need to work on the port number the port number is zero to nine slash why why is the port number oh yeah port number we have we forgot to there do it run it fantastic here is the output fantastic so that's Okay, that's it for today. So we completed we we completed our code. This is how you pass. So let's clean up, uh, remove that. This is how you pass a 
uh, URL in Emacsp and so hold on a second let's clean up so here's a code and there's a building function that's how you do that there okay so now let's put them uh, back color it show in browser so that's how you do it in emacs that's it for today thank you guys for watching that's 70 minutes now if you like my stuff you know buy my emacs tutorial okay so so you go to you know emacs of you emacs fans you go to my website just search for xadi emacs you have emacs tutorial and you have emacs this tutorial um you know then you buy it pay me okay or patreon me or uh, paypal me thank you guys so we shut down in two minutes Awesome, Guy Leons, thank you. So let me read some comments. We shut down in two minutes. Uh, Disney says it would be great to get the H1 tag from the source code via curl we get and get the title of the article from it and combine it for a quick browser browser to emacs link yeah that that would be useful but not for me because that you know you are going to call curl and we get so that means you're gonna make a internet trip you know for me i don't want an internet trip you know, I copy some local file, for example, today's talk show, here's a URL, I copy it, I go to Emacs, I paste it, this is not a fully qualified URL, it's just a local file. So, but I can press the key, and it becomes, you know, Ksar Talk Show, the title. I don't have to make a internet trip. I don't need to, I don't, and I don't want to. Uh, so, but, but for example, if I, if the URL is Ksar Lee, I can also do it because you know because I know this is you know my website so I can I know how this file path maps to my local file so I can actually open the file that's what the code actually do open the file and go to the top and find the title you know title of h1 you know and copy that then then paste the title there so that's the that's what my command do but yeah but of course, for remote, for example, if I copy some, for example, this combinatorics, I copy it, it doesn't work, right? Because I, you know, I, I, I can't get a title, you know, you have to make an internet trip, then in that case, you have to, um, you know, use call or we get. Yeah, but usually I just post my own website, you know, so I don't, uh, I don't really need it. Uh, uh, crazy sloth I think you are a troll don't post political crap okay thank you guys okay uh, and thank you Gayash bye guys oh, we have we have 10 people a bit busy today shutting down bye